Oh, hi. Uh, as you recall, in class we were discussing uh, the, how to obtain the thermodynamic functions of particles in terms of their corresponding partition functions. Now, one particular thermodynamic function that we are interested in is the internal energy of the system. We are discussing a particular kind of system, those that are made up of distinguishable particles, right? The goal in this video clip is to show you how to arrive at an expression for that internal energy in terms of the partition function. The final result is given here, right? So this is what we want to be able to derive, right? And the meaning of this then is that the internal energy for distinguishable particles, right, in terms of the partition function is this. E equal n, the number of particles, Boltzmann constant, temperature, absolute temperature, square, and then the derivative of the natural log of Q, and Q is the partition function of the system with respect to temperature at constant volume. So what this equation is telling us is that if we have access or knowledge to Q, you know, how its functional form, then we should be able to obtain the internal energy of the system based on Q. Okay? So let me just make clear that this is going to be symbolized by the letter E. Okay, so how, how do we get there? Well, let's start with the definition of E in terms of the, num the particles, right? The, the particles occupying a given energy state, right? So N is going to be the number of particles occupying the energy state I, which happens to have an energy E sub I, right? So starting here, we should be able to arrive here. Okay, let's do it. So, Ni, what is Ni? How can we obtain Ni? Well, Ni is given by Boltzmann distribution as we learned in class. Ni then is given as N, the total number of particles, divided by Q, the partition function, right? And E to minus Ei over Kt. Again, K is Boltzmann constant, T is temperature, absolute temperature, E sub I is the energy associated with the, that state, right? So if we use this definition for N sub I, then we can see that this NIEI can be written as take this N over Q outside the summation symbol, right? Then we have E sub I, E minus E I over K T. There is an implicit assumption here that we're going to correct in a, in a second. The assumption is that the energy states are non-degenerate. In general, though, the energy states are degenerate. So how do we account for degeneracy? Well, we use this little or lowercase g sub i. So that means, this g means the degeneracy of the energy state i. So now with this in mind, we can put it back here. So this is our expression. So we have learned not much, but at least we have some ways that connect E with Q. Right? What else can we do? Well, recall that Q is itself defined as the summation of GI right? E minus EI over KT. That in itself is Q. So what else can we do with it? Well, let's take the derivative of Q with respect to temperature at constant volume. What do we get if we do that? So we, you will see, you will be able to show that this is equal to GI, right? EI over KT squared, E to minus EI over KT. 
that can be shown, right? The interesting thing about it is that we have this expression, g i e i e to minus e i k t, here as well, right? So we have g i e i e. So this whole summation part is here, except that we now have this denominator, k t squared. So if we move to the, de the denominator to the other side, right? So that means if I move this to this side, then it's going to be k t squared. And all I have to do is remove it from here now, right? I have it there. So instead of using this sort of cumbersome formula or expression, I can use this in my expression for energy. So let's go back here. Let me change colors so that you see the new things going on. So E then is equal to N over Q times this expression here, right? Let me highlight this, this one, right, this one is or can be replaced by this one now since we show that they are identical right so then this is equal to n k t square d q d t constant v so in terms of the goal of expressing the internal energy of a system or uh, consistent of distinguishable particles and distinguishable particles, we achieve our goal, right? It's here. However, at the beginning we say that this is the desired result. This is how we want to express it. So we don't see the Q as a denominator anymore, right? But we do see the DLN Q dt. Well, you may or may not recall that DLN f x dx, right, from your calculus, and f being a function of x, is equal to 1 over x df dx, right? So now think of f as q, right? So that means 1 over x, the f dx is equal to dln f x dx, right? So if you put q instead of f, you see that that's this part here. Okay, so let's now take into account this consideration to simplify our expression for e. So e now is going to be in kt square 1 over q dq dt constant v but we just learned that this part here is equal to dln q dt so e then is equal to n kt square dln q dt constant v as we originally indicated here, right? So please note then that this whole thing, 1 over q, dq dt constant v is the same as dlnq q dt constant v. Doing that or using that fact, we can express the internal energy this way, and this is the way that we first said that we wanted to express the internal energy as a function of the partition function of the system. Okay, thank you very much, and see you in class. Bye.